Hey there, this is Dan, and this week I'm going to answer a question that I got from Rio. So Rio had a question around the meaning of underscore characters in Python variable names. So I've put together this little example class, or you know, just a bit of example code that we can play with. And um, here in the constructor of this class, I'm creating three instance variables. So I'm creating the foo variable here, assigning it a value. I'm creating another variable called underscore bar. And then also I'm creating a third variable called double underscore or dunder baz. Because often what we do when we talk about double underscores in Python, we just shorten that to dunder so and so. So in this case, this uh, variable here would be called dunder baz. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna create an object based on this class. So I've got my little T object here, which is a test object. So when it comes to variable names, the underscore in Python has a, a specific meaning. So the single underscore and the double underscore, they both have meanings in Python. And some of that is just by convention. So what uh, kind of everyone believes what an underscore should mean. And some of it is actually enforced by the Python interpreter. With the single underscore, most of it is by convention. So this is generally seen as a hint that um, a name is to be treated as private by the programmer. So it, this isn't really anything that's enforced by Python, right? Python doesn't have these strong distinctions between uh, private and public variables like, um, for example, Java does. But it's more a hint to another programmer that the variable or a variable that starts with a single underscore carries some internal state and is not really meant as part of the public interface of a class. So it's best to leave it alone. Now with the double underscore or dunder prefix, there is actually something that the Python interpreter does. Um, there's some name mangling it applies. So it's going to change the name of that variable in a way that's going to make it harder to create collisions when someone else extends this class. And I know this sounds completely abstract, so this is why I put this code example together here, because what we can do now, we can take a look at the attributes on this object. All right, so now we're looking at the attributes in this object here. And what we can do now is we can look for foo underscore bar and dunder bass in this list. And then we're gonna notice some interesting changes. So with the foo variable, that just appears here one-to-one, -one, right? So self.foo appears as foo on the class. Uh, then we've got self underscore bar, and that'll appear as underscore bar. So, you know, nothing changed here. This is just a convention, uh, a hint meant for the programmer to say that this is uh, a private variable or, you know, one that you should careful should be careful about changing. Now with the dunder baz attribute here, things are a little bit different because when you search for it here in that list, there is actually no variable called uh, dunder bass, but there's one that is called underscore test, which is the name of the class, dunder bass. And this is the name mangling that's going on. So the Python interpreter does this to protect subclasses. Um, so for example, if you were to extend the test class with another class that inherits from test, it does that name mangling to prevent naming collisions. Because when you create another class based on this test class, maybe you want to use the same name, right? Maybe you want to use um, a similar variable name. And then these two names would collide and it would kind of create uh, a pretty horrible bug or a kind of crappy situation there. So that is why Python applies this name mangling. And of course, this name mangling doesn't just apply to what you can see with the dir function, but it also applies to, well, you just accessing attributes on the object, right? So I can access t.foo and t underscore bar. But if I go t.dunderbaz, the object doesn't actually have an attribute called dunderbaz. And this is exactly what happened there with the name mangling, right? So I can get at that attribute using the mangled name, but this is a really bad idea, right? Like don't do this. So this is not a good idea because every time the name of the class changes, the name of the attribute is gonna change and then you're gonna have a bad time. Really the only way to access these quote unquote private attributes, because they're not really private as you can see, right? They're just uh, mangled to avoid naming collisions. 
um, really th the only reasonable way to get at them is to access them from the class itself. Because here in the class, you know, every time you go self dot dunder baz, Python is going to apply that mangling automatically and you don't have to worry about it. It's more a protection from, you know, subclasses changing the attribute or uh, other code reaching into an object and trying to change it. But, you know, as you can see, it's a sort of a weak protection. It's not really enforced in any way. It's more, you know, through that naming change uh, makes it a little bit harder to actually accidentally break things. All right, so this is kind of the short and sweet explanation of what's going on with these uh, uh, variable names and the single underscore and double underscore prefixes that you sometimes see in Python code. If you enjoyed this tutorial and you'd like to see more just like it, then subscribe to my YouTube channel. I put out at least one new tutorial a week. So just hit the subscribe button and you're going to learn Python as we go along. Cool. So talk to you soon and happy Pythoning.